As Matthias was negotiating peace in Bohemia in 1479, there were successes on the Ottoman border. The voivod of Transylvania, Stephen Bathory, and the ennobled commoner commander Paul Kinigi defeated a large Ottoman army at the Battle of Kenyermezzo, while on the other side of the realm a large group of Ottoman raiders returning from Styria were intercepted by armies of the Croatian magnates. The same year, Venice concluded a separate peace with the Sultan. The Republic of San Marco lost more of its possessions in Greece, the Aegean, and Albania, and had to pay the Sultan 10,000 florins a year for trading rights. King Matthias was of course not happy about the Venetian separate peace. He was even less happy when informed that secret messengers from the Croatian magnate Ivan Frankopan were caught conducting secret diplomacy with the Sultan. They were caught by Matthias' secret messengers sent to conduct secret diplomacy with the Sultan. This was not the first time Ivan Frankopan, the lord of the island of Kirk, had frustrated King Matthias. Over the years, he had conducted acts of aggression and piracy against his own family on the mainland, against other members of the Croatian estates, and people and places under the protection of either the Republic of Venice or Emperor Frederick III, for which Matthias was held partially responsible for. Ivan Frankopan also secretly corresponded with Venice, Frederick III, and now the Sultan. And there's also the fact that the Frankopan family were tied to the 1471 conspiracy to overthrow Matthias. Other Croatian magnates acted in similar ways to Ivan. It was just that Ivan Frankopan went far too far and Matthias' patience ran out. The king, now returned from Bohemia, was keen to make an example out of the unruly magnate. An army was dispatched by Matthias in 1480 to seize and secure the island of Kirk. Upon hearing of the king's army arriving, the inhabitants of Kirk also rose up against Ivan in support of the king's invasion. Ivan, in a move of desperation, called on Venice for help and sent his wife and children there for safety. But the Venetians informed him that they can't defend Matthias' own island from Matthias. But they could do something if that island were to suddenly become Venetian. Ivan was soon convinced to sign over control of Kirk to Venice, having been led to believe that he would still retain control of the island under the Venetian flag. Venice reinforced and blockaded the island, Matthias's army was forced to withdraw, and a local revolt was calmed by the change of management. Almost immediately, Venice had altered the deal with Ivan Frankopan and replaced most of his administrators on the island with their own. The now former Lord of Kirk was forced into exile, having been flim-flammed out of his family's oldest possession. Ivan Frankopan spent the rest of his life trying to persuade the rulers he had irritated to help him reclaim Kirk. He died in exile in 1486. Ivan Frankopan's folly turned the king's attention towards the unruly Croatian and Slavonian estates in 1481. King Matthias saw an opportunity to set an example and to test out and demonstrate the extent of his power and authority over the estates of his realm. Palatine Michael Orsag and the Judge Royal Stephen Bathory were dispatched to Zagreb to set up an extraordinary palatinal criminal trial. Charges of robbery, murder, rebellion in 1471, and treasonous communication with the king's enemies were brought against members of the Croatian and Slavonian estates. To name a few, the Frankopan, Shubic Zrinski, Blagajski, Kuryakovic magnate families, the Bishop of Zagreb, Oswald Tuz, and his brother, former Ban Ivan Tuz. They were all pronounced guilty of all charges and sentenced to death and confiscation of all property by the crown. However, there was one very important aspect to this trial. None of the accused and convicted were there. King Matthias did not want to eradicate the Croatian estates. He wanted to demonstrate a carrot-and-stick style of rulership for the entire realm. The criminal charges were the stick, the royal pardon was the carrot. 
all of the convicted were soon enough granted pardons in return for either land, money, or support for the king's policies. On the other side of the Adriatic, in southern Italy, in 1480, Sultan Mehmed II's forces captured the city of Otranto, thus managing to unite the disparate states of the Italian boot in one goal, pushing the Ottomans out of Otranto. As the son-in-law to the king of Naples, King Mophias also sent a portion of his army to participate in the siege. Sultan Mehmed II died in 1481 and was succeeded by his son Bayezid II. After a short succession battle with his brother Chem, Bayezid broke the last significant pockets of resistance in Ottoman-controlled parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, while in Italy the United Italian Christian forces took back control of Otranto and returned to their discord. Mophias and Bayezid appear to have reached some sort of truce agreement in early 1482, because at the time, Mophias feels safe enough to finally turn up the heat on the Cold War with Frederick III by laying siege to Heinberg. Mophias put in diplomatic efforts to limit the war by claiming that he wasn't attacking the Holy Roman Emperor, just the Archduke of Austria. Mophias and Bayezid signed a formal truce in 1483, leaving Mophias free to conduct his war with Frederick III, and Bayezid free to deal with Prince Stephen of Moldavia, who without external support submitted to Bayezid in 1484. On the 1st of June 1485, Mophias reached his zenith. He and the Black Army triumphantly entered Vienna, and Frederick III lost the seat of the House of Austria for the second time in his life. The war with Frederick ended in 1487 after the fall of Vienna Neustadt. With the Peace of St. Polten, Frederick handed over Styria and Lower Austria to Matthias. But while Matthias may have bested Frederick on the military field, Frederick III bested Matthias in the diplomatic and political arena. Even though Frederick was unable to get the imperial princes to help him with military means, in 1486 the imperial prince-electors, sans Matthias, elected Frederick's son Maximilian as the new king of Germany, effectively heir to the empire, quashing any and all imperial hopes Matthias may have had. And to add insult to injury, Frederick III made the traitorous and defective Archbishop of Estrogom, Johann Beckenschläger, the new Prince Archbishop of Salzburg. The House of Austria would also survive the loss of most of its Austrian territory thanks to the bountiful resources provided by the Burgundian inheritance of Maximilian's now late wife Mary. Even though Maximilian was having a little trouble maintaining control of the Low Countries in the name of his son, Matthias apparently did try and offer Styria and Lower Austria in exchange for the imperial title, but the Habsburgs were secure enough not to have to consider the offer. While his army waged a war of sieges against his oldest rival, Matthias also had to focus on domestic matters primarily the succession and his legacy. Long story short, Kirk wasn't the only island Venice had acquired for an odd set of circumstances. In 1468, the king of Cyprus married a Venetian noblewoman, Catarina Coronaro, who became queen regent in 1473 and queen regnant in 1474, after the death of her son. She abdicated in favor of the Republic of Venice in 1489. 